Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and hello to all of you. Uh, this is Dr. Aisha and today we are going to learn about chapter 4 decision making and relevant information. Here you can see um, some of the subtopics that we are going to learn in this um, topic basically. We are going to look at the theories in understanding about relevant and non-relevant information. And we will also look at the one time only special order. And in this course, uh, you will also study about a decision by managers on whether they want to um, outsource or insource uh, their products, opportunity cost approach, carrying cost inventory, products mix, decision bottlenecks, theories of constraints, decision about whether to drop customers or to add customers and whether the company wants to close or adding branch office and lastly i think that it's not here but it's something that will be discussed as well in this uh, topic that's basically on performance evaluation um, decision making and it is related to performance evaluation how basically the management the management uh, have a look at the performance of uh, each of the managers and all of these subtopics basically are related to short run decision making because uh, it happened in normally within a year and some of uh, the decision in fact uh, need to um, need a very short uh, period to make a decision for example like um, in the case of one time only special order possibly they receive an order for you know like just one month ago and they have to make a very quick uh, decision whether to accept or to reject such offer so all of this under the category of short run decision making by the managers basically Alright, so in regards to these uh, subtopics, it is very important for students to understand what does it mean by relevant and non-relevant information because um, by using this uh, information, students will be able to know what types of information that need to be used need to take into account for managers to make decisions and what types of information that should be neglected. So. A decision model is a formal method of making a choice that often involves both quantitative and qualitative analysis and the concept of relevant information. We are looking at relevant costs and relevant revenues. Relevant costs are expected future costs okay, that differ among the alternative courses of action being considered. And relevant revenues refers to the expected future revenues that differ among the alternative courses of action being considered which means that both of them to in order for them to be relevant it must be something that happened in the future okay means that it's not occurred yet not happened yet um, and it must be differ among the alternative if it is similar between alternative one and alternative two it is considered as irrelevant so um, as i said before it must comply with two requirements. The first, it must be something that not happened yet, right? So it is something that will occur in future and it must be differ among the alternative. Other costs and revenues that are not relevant, we call it as irrelevant information. All right. Other than that, the concept of cost that you need to understand in this topic is basically related to the opportunity cost, where it's basically the contribution to operating income that is foregone by not using a limited resource in its next best alternative use. For example, let's say you are actually studying accounting at the university, for example, right? So this includes there are several costs that you need to pay which includes tuition fees, food, hostel, etc. and all of these are considered as relevant costs. However, at the same time, you will occur what we call here as opportunity costs that is income sacrificed by not working. Okay, So income sacrificed by not working here, we consider this as 
and opportunity cost for you given that you choose to study accounting at the university. So this is the cost that you have to pay and at the same time you suffer uh, the other cost that is the income that you might receive if you are working. Okay, so this is uh, what we classify this as an opportunity cost. Other concept of cost includes sunk cost. Okay, sunk cost is actually a past cost or historical cost. Alright, and sunk costs are never relevant. It's not relevant. Alright, because well, because it's already occurred and cannot be changed. And whatever action that we take in future, still we cannot change the sunk cost. So this is sunk cost is actually is irrelevant cost. Okay, it is irrelevant cost. All right, it's not a part of relevant because it is something that already occurred in the past. Okay, other concept of relevant information that students need to know is basically related to quantitative factors and qualitative factors. Quantitative factors are basically outcome that can be measured in financial terms, it can be measured in a monetary terms, but the qualitative factors are the outcomes that cannot be measured in the financial terms. For example, like it is employee moral, for example, this is something that we cannot measure. The discipline, the motivation of the employee, for example, this is also a part of qualitative factors. Other terms that students need to know before we can uh, start with our decision-making process is basically related to incremental course uh, which means the additional total cost incurred for an activity. Differential cost, that is the difference in total cost between two alternatives. Incremental revenue, which means the additional total revenue from an activity. Differential revenue, that is the difference in total revenue between two alternatives. All right. In addition to that, um, students also need to be aware of uh, this what they call as uh, two potential problems in relevance cost analysis number one is where the managers should um, avoid incorrect general assumptions such as all variable costs are relevant all fixed costs are irrelevant so this is something that is what we call as generalization because um, we cannot simply say that all variable costs are relevant. It must be relevant. No, it doesn't necessarily like that. Or we cannot say that all fixed costs are irrelevant because they are all similar all years. So this is something that we have to be pay. We have to extra careful because um, because in certain situation, um, sometimes, for example, like variable costs can also become irrelevant information. Okay, and sometimes the fixed costs also become can be relevant information. So get back to the determination of whether that kind of course is basically um, relevant or irrelevant. As I said before, first it must be related to the future. It will happen in the future, and second, it must be different. It must be different between two alternative. All right. Other that other things that managers should also be extra careful in the sense that the unique fixed cost can potentially mislead managers in two way. In the sense that, for example, fixed cost might include um, irrelevant cost. Okay, fixed unit cost might include irrelevant cost. Um, cost that will not change whether or not the one time only order is accepted or not. Okay, so this is something that um, the managers have to uh, think about. As well as uh, if using the same unit fixed cost at different output levels, managers may reach erroneous conclusions. And this is a situation where total fixed cost should be used. In this instance, it means that fixed unit cost might include um, irrelevant costs. Okay. In the sense that cost that will not change, all right. So the fixed cost is still occur regardless 
whether the firms accept one time only order or not so whether the the whether we accept or we reject the special order sometimes um the fixed cost still remain the same all right so this is what it mean by uh, this part and if using the same unit fixed cost at different output levels managers may reach erroneous conclusion or managers may reach a different or wrong conclusion in the sense that um, the fixed cost, the unit fixed cost might be different according to the output level. So um, as in this case, like if you, we use total fixed cost, um, it is much more accurate rather than unit fixed cost. Because uh, in the case of we use unit fixed cost at different output level, it might be misleading or might lead to wrong information for the managers. All right, if we look at this example, um, the purpose is to determine the relevant revenues and relevant costs for sports style company, whether the company should do reorganization uh, or not. All right, so in this column, alternative one, and this is alternative two, in alternative one, this is the revenue and cost if the firms do not organize, do not make a reorganization to the schedule for operation. And alternative two is where if the company choose to do the reorganization. Okay, so this is basically all the information and this is the column where we decide whether that kind of information is relevant or irrelevant. All right, so as in this case, we can see that the revenues for alternative one and two basically similar so this information is irrelevant direct material is similar for both alternative one and alternative two this is also irrelevant manufacturing labor seems that for alternative one it is six hundred and forty thousand, and for alternative two four hundred eighty thousand. so it is differ between alternative one and alternative two so it is relevant information so that's why we classify this as relevant information here Manufacturing overheat is also similar for alternative 1 and 2, so it is irrelevant. Marketing also irrelevant. However, when it comes to residual costs, we can see that alternative 1 have no rescheduled res costs, but for alternative 2, it has 90,000 of the rescheduled costs. So it differs between alternative 1 and 2, so it can be a part of our relevant information that is relevant cause for us to decide whether we should do reorganization or not okay so the total cost here all right and when it comes to the operating income we can see that the operating income for alternative one is one six one zero 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 and for alternative two the operating income is one six eight zero 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 and as we can see the difference between here all revenues and costs is 70,000 difference similar to this column uh, because basically we just consider the different the costs that are different the the costs that are different between alternative 1 and alternative 2 all right because the rest of the costs or revenues are basically similar so that's why we call it as irrelevant information okay if we look at the manufacturing labor cost, if we look at the difference in alternative one and alternative two, in this instance, alternative one, if we do not do the reorganization, all right, the manu manufacturing labor is 640,000. And if we organize, the cost for manufacturing labor will be reduced, that is 480,000. Nevertheless, when we do the reschedule cost, okay, when we do the reorganization, then we will occur this reschedule cost that is 90,000, all right? So if we look at this overall situation, it seems that if we do the reorganization, it seems that it's still profitable for the company, okay? Because in this, uh, if we look at the operating income, whether to organize or 
we should not organize, we can see that the operating income is higher in alternative two, in the sense that although there is an rescheduled cost here of ninety thousand, all right. Nevertheless, um, we can see that this cost is much lower than this manufacturing labor. So still, if we do the organization, the operating income is still better. It's higher if we reorganize rather than if we not reorganize and the difference is about 70,000 it's a huge amount so the company should um, so recommendation for this company is that the company should uh, basically do the reorganization because it helps to reduce manufacturing labor costs and also if it as in our calculation we can see that reschedule costs occur nevertheless still the operating income is higher in alternative 2 rather than alternative 1. As we can see in this column, okay, for relevant revenues and costs, the total cost for alternative 1 is 640000 and for alternative 2, the total cost is 570,000. So basically, this column, column 2, if we reorganize, it is the cost, is, it is lower than column 1 where we didn't do the reorganization. Alright, now we look at uh, another example. A company has an inventory of 1300 assorted parts for a line of automobile that has been discontinued. And the cost of inventory is 71,000. The parts can either we remachine at the total additional cost of 27,500 and then sold for 21,500 or option B, we sold as scrap for 6,000. So which one is actually much more profitable? So as in this instance, this 71,000 cost of inventory is actually irrelevant because it already occurred in the past. It is historical cost. So this is something we should not uh, take into account. What we should consider basically the cost that not yet happened. Okay, the cost, uh, the future cost that might need to uh, cons the future cost that will happen so this is something that we should only consider therefore if we look at this table for example in the case of remachine the future revenues in the sense that uh, if we remachine at the total additional cost of 27,500 then will be another future cost and we can sell that for 31,500 okay that is in the case if we are remachine. So these are basically future costs as well as future revenues that we consider. Or possibly we use second option if we scrap for six thousand, which means we will get another future revenues of six thousand. And if we look at this um, calculation, we can see that the operating income for option one, if we remachine, the operating income is four thousand. But if we just sell it as scrap then we can get operating income of 6,000 and there's a 2,000 difference and it is relatively higher for us to scrap so that's why the company should scrap rather than remachine uh, the inventory all right now we look at another example for us to understand more about relevant and irrelevant information. We are going to read this question together. Razak Computers makes 5,700 units of power banks at a cost of 230 each. Variable cost per unit is 180. Okay, for uh, Razak to make uh, this power bank, the variable cost per unit is 180 and fixed cost per unit is 50. Ahmad Electronics at the same time, can offers to supply 5,700 units of power bank for 210. If Raza buys from Ahmad, it will be able to save 20 per unit 
in fixed costs but continue to incur the remaining 30 per unit. Should Raza accept Ahmad's offer? And this is basically a question related to whether Raza should make or should buy from Ahmad. So this is in this decision, all right, we have to be able to identify whether that kind of information is relevant or irrelevant, okay? So, as we can see in the solution, okay, if we if Razak make, the variable cost will occur, that is 180. Other than that, the fixed cost also will be occur. Okay, we understand that the fixed cost is 50 here. If Razak buy, the fixed cost that Razak have to cover is 30. Nevertheless, if Razak make the products, um, we can see here the cost that they need to uh, bear, that Razak have to bear, is 50. Alright, which means if he uh, buy, he can save uh, another 20. So, this is the cost for variable cost and this is unavoidable fixed cost that Razak have to bear if they want to make the power bank so it is 20 so the unit relevant cost is 200 here but if Razak buy the purchase price is 210 okay so the unit relevant cost here is 210 so in this instance basically because the unit relevant cost is 200 it is lower than 210 in this instance Razak should reject Ahmad's offer and they should make by themselves because um, you know it is much cheaper rather than if they buy from Ahmad right that's number one number two the things that you should know is that the 30 ringgit of fixed cost is basically in the case is irrelevant because why because regardless whether Ahmad make or buy still it can it occur Still, Ahmad, Ahmad, uh, still Razak have to, sorry, uh, in case whether Razak want to buy or to make the power bank, still Razak have to bear this course of 30, 30 ringgit. So that's why this 30 ringgit is basically is irrelevant cost. Okay, so as in this question, Razak should make rather than buy because if Razak make it, it is cheaper rather than if he buy that from Ahmad. Alright, it is important to note here, alright, the basis of five years here, this is uh, the um, new machine, the useful life is five years. And if we look at the old machine, um, the useful life is, is actually nine years and the current age is four years means that we will have another five years of usage for all machines so that's why uh, we calculate the cash operating cost for five years here okay now we look at another example rara manufacturing is deciding whether to keep or replace an old machine it obtains the following information the original cost for old machine and new machine, the useful life, the current age, remaining useful life, accumulated depreciation for both old machine and new machine, book value uh, 6000 and new machine is not yet acquired. We didn't buy it yet so we don't have an information for all of these things for new machine basically. Current disposal value in cash, for example, if we sell the old machine, we can get this 2,800. Terminal disposal value five years from now, zero for both. And annual cash operating costs for old machine is 18,000 and 15,000 for new machine. And other information given includes that Rara Manufacturing uses straight line depreciation and we have to ignore the time value of money and income tax 
And in this question, we are required whether we have to calculate whether we should or whether Rara should replace the old machine or not. Okay, if you look at the solution, all right, basically the operating cost for five years, okay, so this is the operating cost for one year. So we have to times this with five years, all right, because it seems that the terminal disposal value is zero means that after five years we possibly want to sell this um, machine so that's why cash operating cost for five years if we keep then 18,000 times five equal to 90,000 and 15,000 times five we can get here 75,000 if we replace and the difference is 15,000 all right and the current disposal value of old machine so if we replace the machine we can sell the current machine that we have and we can get a uh, cash of 2800 here okay because why if we sell this then we can get in cash of 2800 all right and if we replace which means we also need to um, buy the new machine which will cost us another 8,800 okay this is the cost of the new machine when we want to um, buy alright and if we keep the total relevant cost is 90,000 that is basically the cash operating cost based on also the useful life of five years all right of uh, this situation and um, if we replace it then we will occur the cash operating cost for five years but at the same time we can also make money by selling the old machine and we also have to pay for another cost that is the cost of the new machine and in case if we replace the total relevant cost that we have to that rara company have to cover is 81000 and the difference between keep or replace is basically 9000 and in this case rara should replace the old machine because the cost to purchase the new machine is cheaper rather than if Rara want to keep the old machine.